There are places in Asia that folks are forbidden from visiting. And yes, that does include places of worship. Today we have sites in Japan, China, Turkey, and more to warn you about. So keep listening. Japan is globally popular for its shrine culture and houses approximately 80,000 of them. The most important among all is the Ise Grand Shrine, which is a complex composed of many Shinto shrines centered on two main shrines. It is one of the most expensive temples in Japan due to its architectural grandeur. To maintain the Shinto traditions dating back to the 8th century, this temple is rebuilt every 20 years, and that comes with a very hefty price tag. Fun fact, unless you are a member of the royal family, you are forbidden to enter the hallowed halls of this ancient Japanese representation. However, tourists are free to roam the forest, including its ornamental walkways, but no stepping on the property. The inner shrine is dedicated to the worship of Amaterasu and is located on the south of the central, where she is believed to dwell. The shrine buildings are made of solid cypress wood and use no nails, but instead joined wood, so you can see how costs that up. The outer shrine is dedicated to the god of agriculture, rice harvest, and industry. Allegedly the home of the sacred mirror, this whole shrine is one of Shinto's holiest and most important sites. During the Edo period, it is estimated that one out of ten Japanese folks conducted a pilgrimage to this shrine. Allegedly, a pilgrimage to said shrine flourished in both commercial and religious frequency. According to historical documents, 3.62 million people visited the shrine in 50 days back in 1625, and 1.18 million people visited the shrine in just three days in 1829 when the grand festival that used to be held every 20 years was held. Because the shrine is considered a sanctuary, no security checkpoints were conducted, as it was considered sacrilege by the faithful. The two main shrines are joined by a pilgrimage road to this day that passes through the old entertainment district. The chief priest or priestess of the shrine must be related to the Imperial House of Japan and they are the ones responsible for watching over the shrine. According to my research, the current high priestess of the shrine is the daughter of the Emperor Emeritus Akihito, former princess Sayako Kuroda. The mausoleum of China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, has been buried deep underneath a pyramid for more than 2,000 years. It is one of the greatest discoveries of all time, but remains a mystery for historians and archaeologists. It was constructed over a period of 38 years, from 246 to 208 BCE, and yes, like I said, it is situated under a 76 meter tall tomb mount, shaped like a truncated pyramid, for being specific. The layout of the mausoleum is modeled on the layout of the capital of the dynasty, which was divided into inner and outer cities. The the circumference of the inner city is about 2.5 kilometers, the outer is 6.3, and the tomb is located in the southwest of the inner city and faces east. So the main tomb chamber housing the coffin and burial artifacts is the core of the architectural complex of the mausoleum. But here's the thing, the tomb itself hasn't been excavated. We'll get into more why in a moment. Archaeological explorations currently concentrate on various sites of the extensive necropolis surrounding the tomb, including the terracotta army to the east of the tomb mount. That army served as a garrison to the mausoleum, and yeah, like I said, it has not been completely excavated. So, with all of that, the contents of the tomb are mostly sealed and unexplored, but you cannot go there. It is said that the burial complex comprises of a lot of things that the man buried there is going to need in the afterlife. So, to pay respect to the ancient site, the Chinese government has absolutely prohibited excavation of the tomb, making it one of the most forbidden places of worship in the world. The Plutonian at Herapolis, or Pluto's Gate, was a Plutonian in the ancient city of Herapolis near Pamukkale in modern Turkey's Denizli province. If I butchered any of that, I apologize, I practiced. Though the exact age of the site is currently unknown, the nearby city was founded around the year 190 BC by the king of Pergamum, Eumenes II. Back in the ancient times, people didn't dare to venture there because they believed it to be a very dangerous place. According to the ancient historian Strabo, nobody could survive the trip. After he visited the place, he wrote that he threw in sparrows and they immediately breathed their last and fell. Ritual animal sacrifices were actually common at the site. Animals, kind of like this, would be chucked into the cave and then pulled back out with ropes that had been tied to them. Archaeologists noted that the fumes emitted from the cavern still maintained their deadly properties as they recorded passing birds, attracted by the warm air, died after breathing the toxic fumes to this day. But going back in time, during the early years of the town, the castrated priests of Saibel, known as the Gali, descended into the Plutonian, crawled all over the floor to pockets of oxygen, or held their breath. Fun fact, carbon dioxide is heavier than air, so they tend to settle in hollows. Then these priests came up to show that they were immune. People believed a miracle had happened, and that therefore the priests were infused with superior powers, they had divine protection. That wasn't true, we'll get to the truth in a moment. To every surprise, the reputation was confirmed by scientists in 1965. This is when the site was 
officially discovered by Italian archaeologists, who published reports on their excavations throughout the decade. Following the studies carried out on the site in 1998, a geologist of the Italian National Research Council, Luigi Picardi, recognized that the origin of both the area and of the nearby Apollo's Oracle was linked to the existence of the surface trace of a seismic fault, which both sanctuaries were purposely built, and that's how we got the Gateway of Hades. So after measuring the CO2 concentration, they found out that at night, when the temperature gets lower, things get cooler, and CO2 becomes a lot heavier than air, it forms some kind of a lake on the bottom of the gate. But at dawn, the concentration reaches its peak, and any living being is going to risk their life by getting there. Apparently, during daytime, the site's a little bit safer. The sun helps to dissipate the gas. But at the end of the day, it's just a small cave, just large enough for one person to enter through a fenced entrance, beyond which the stairs go down, and then you get all that gas from that underground geologic activity. So I wouldn't risk your life. In 2013, it was further explored by Italian archaeologists and as part of a restoration project, a replica of the marble statue of Hades and Cerberus has been restored to its original place, because apparently that was there before. Pretty neat. Yemeni pilgrims are among the more than 2 million pilgrims that ascend regularly to the Holy Mount of Arafa to perform the major rituals of Hajj, the noon and afternoon prayers, both combined and shortened. Then they perform other prayers, they spend the night there, and then they return from there to Mina. So these pilgrim camps comprise four service centers, in which there is an integrated system of transportation and various logistical services services that authorities have harnessed to serve them. And this has provided a great atmosphere, and all this sounds really great and swell and all, but where they tend to travel, you can't go. And even where they're from, you can't go either. So the area of Arafat is approximately 33 square kilometers, where more than 2 million pilgrims gather every year. And the largest pillar of the pilgrimage is standing on the mountain, and you can't have your pilgrimage without that. Why can't we travel anywhere that I've just mentioned? Well, the United States Department warns not to travel to Yemen because of civil unrest, health risks, kidnapping, armed conflict, and more. The embassy ceased operations in the country in 2015. There's no part of Yemen that is immune to violence. Military conflict has caused significant destruction of infrastructure, housing, schools, medical facilities, utilities, and more. On top of that, there's a lot of attacks. There's a threat of kidnapping. Also, Yemen has the world's largest cholera outbreak, which is throughout the entire country. So if you do travel there, that's on you. Finally for today, North Sentinel Island is one of the Andaman Islands in the Bay of Bengal, which also includes the South Sentinel Island. Now this island in particular, the north one, is a protected area of India. It is home to the Sentinelese, an indigenous tribe in voluntary isolation who have defended, often by force, their protected isolation from the outside world. Their population was estimated to be between 50 to 400 people in a 2012 report, which shows you how much we know. India's 2011 census was like, maybe there's 15 people. But once again, this is a wild guess. The islanders have been observed firing arrows at boats, as well as low-flying helicopters, all to protect themselves. And these attacks have resulted in injury and death, well, because people try to trespass. In 2006, islanders killed two fishermen whose boat had drifted ashore, and in 2018, an American missionary, 26-year-old John Cho, was killed after he illegally attempted to make contact with the islanders three separate times and paid folks to transport him to the island. Indian officials made several attempts to recover the body, but eventually it wasn't worth it. An anthropologist involved in the case was like, the risk of a dangerous clash was too great to justify any further attempts. I can't emphasize it enough. This region is strictly prohibited for visitors of any kind and is one of the most dangerous and forbidden places in the world. That's it folks, I've been Alexa, your ooky spooky girly. See ya!